Goldberg and seven minutes. Welcome to the committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you and welcome to Commissioner Kelly. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you as well for your Deputy Minister and your Deputy Commissioner for being here. Um, as you are, I'm sure, aware and you've been following uh, the questions that we've been asking the government in the House of Commons regarding uh, the fact that the killer of, of Tory Stafford has, who still has 17 years left to serve on the sentence that she was given for participating in a brutal murder of a little girl, uh, that this individual has now been moved to a healing lodge. I, I think you're obviously aware that we've been asking the government questions around that. I understand that a review has been requested. I will leave my questions around around uh, how in the world anybody could see that that would be uh, a fair and a legitimate uh, decision to make. I, I will leave that because that is not my question at this point. I think it's clear that Canadians are outraged. It's clear the family doesn't understand how this could happen. We're not clear if the government is outraged, but if the government hypothetically was as outraged at this and felt it was as wrong as Canadians do, as we do, the minister has the ability to ask you, as the commissioner, under the Act, to immediately begin the process so that this decision would be reversed. Is that correct? Is that how you understand the Act? Again, for me, the minister has asked me to do a review, an in-depth review of the case, and this is what I'm going to do. Thank you. But just so I'm clear, though, and you understand the chain of command, I, in fact, I'll, I'll read from the Act. Section 6 of the Corrections and Conditional Release Act states, the Governor and Council may appoint a person to be known as the Commissioner of Corrections who, under the direction of the Minister, so you are under the Minister's direction, Minister Ralph Goodell, correct? Yes. He's under Minister Goodell's direction, has the control and management of the service and all matters connected with the service. So that's a clear chain of command. So if the government, if Minister Goodale would in fact take the decision that this decision to have Tory Stafford's murderer placed in a healing lodge should be immediately reversed, he could go to you and immediately have that process begun. That, and would that require a phone call, an email? What would that require so that you could begin that process? Um, again, the minister has asked me to conduct a review of the case, and this is exactly what I'm going to do. And I've already identified individuals to do the review, uh, seeking a community member. At the same time as we review the case, and I, I can't get into the specifics of any cases. Respectfully, I just have seven minutes, and so I've been very, very specific on my... I, 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 just, I just have seven minutes, and I'm asking a very specific question that I think we as members of Parliament put aside this case. Let's say hypothetically, not, not even this case, let's say hypothetically there was something else happening in, uh, in our prisons that Minister Goodell thought was wrong and should be changed. How would he ask you, what would be the process whereby you would make those changes? How does that work? Would he send you an email? Would he call for a meeting? Would he need to write a directive? What's the process whereby the minister would direct you? Well, in the case at hand, he has asked that I do a uh, in-depth review of the case, and this is exactly what I'm going to do. You know, I'm being admonished to be respectful, and I am, and I would ask that you afford me the same respect, and if you're not willing to answer the question, I would ask that you would just tell me that. Just say, I'm not going to answer your question. But I'm a duly elected member of Parliament, and I'm asking you, ma'am, that you would please tell me the process if a minister disagrees with something that is happening under your purview, how would he direct you? And if you're not willing to answer that, please tell me. But please don't keep repeating that you're doing a, 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 a looking into this. I'd like to know, apart from this case, how would he begin the process so that, let's say hypothetically, the government thought that a child killer should not be in a healing lodge, how would a minister communicate that to you so that you could begin it? And can I be clear? I, 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 I don't necessarily, although you are the commissioner, I think the responsibility now does lie with the minister. And I think it's unfair that you are being put in this position. So I, I'm actually wondering what we can encourage him to do so that you then can do what he's asked you to do, because you're trying to just do your job under his direction. Yes, I am. And uh, for me, I, again, I'm 
recently appointed to the position of commissioner. And in, in th this is a case where the minister has actually asked that I do a review. So th that's how it was done. He asked me to do a review, and but that's what I'm going like, to do, you? an in-depth right. review. But if, but if it was another case, we, okay, let's not talk about this case. Again, if there was something else that was going on that the minister didn't like, how would he ask you to change that? you to do the review. Did he send you an email? Did he phone you? How would the minister communicate with you? He would ask me to do a review. Okay, okay. so if he would like you to change the process whereby Tory Stafford's murderer was in a healing lodge, he would just need to ask you to do that. That's what I'm hearing from your answers. He just needs to ask you and then you can begin the process. One minute. One minute. Thank you. I, I think it's clear that that is that is what's needed, and um, I, I I think that you know the the arguments and, and Canadians watching this certainly have a lot of questions about how this could have happened. Uh, I think there are a lot of questions about are there any other child killers who are in facilities like the Healing Lodge. Uh, I think that this is something that uh, if we as politicians and dare I say civil servants don't understand the gravity of this we're, we're probably missing um, n not only victims but the general public's view on this so it would be very helpful to us if you would clearly state what you need the minister to do because then we can encourage him and hopefully the government will see this and they will come to you immediately and ask you to begin the process to reverse this bad decision on, on, um, I, I just want to be clear, this was a, a tr tragedy that changed many lives forever. Um, I have been asked to do a review. I am committed to doing a review of the case. As I said, we have a rigorous case management process, but through this review, we will ensure that the decision was done according to the laws and the policies. Thank, but thank the, you. the minister the has review, the ability thank, to change that. Thank you. He has the both. power. Thank you, Ms. Bergen, Madam um, Kelly, Mr. Dubé, seven minutes. Merci, uh, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Commissioner, thank you for being with us today and congratulations on your appointment. I have several points I would like to go over. The first concerning administrative segregation.